So chapters 13 through 20, one of the reasons I started this and we're talking about the OPT model, not only because it's NASM's model and it's important you guys understand it, it's kind of our framework for how we think about where to start someone and where to take them. Um, but you're going to get a lot of questions here. All right. NASM, the nice thing is, is we know going into the exam how many questions NASM is going to ask us from each section. And that's because that's weighted upon how NASM and the industry sees that material as important for a personal trainer. And so when we get into section five, chapters 13 through 20, you guys are going to get a fair amount of questions, right? You're going to get more than 20 questions in this area, right? It's more than you know, essentially more than 20% of your exam coming from this specific area. So NASM is telling you, hey, pay attention here. Now, the cool part is you can honestly, you can problem solve a lot of stuff inside of this section. If you understand that section five is built off the OPT model, right? If you get into the chapters on core training, on plyometric training, on balance training, like these other types of training, outside of just resistance, right? Resistance training, it's easier to think about. It's really just this idea of we want to have an appropriate place to start people, right? Think of it as phase one. We want to know how do we build some stability for someone in these different capacities. Phase two, we add a little bit more challenge, a little bit more amplitude, more intensity. And then phase three is essentially the, the most challenging versions of each of these. So I say that it's kind of like a general framework. But as you go through the rest of chapters 13 through 20, just think the OPT model is kind of operating in the background of all these things.